Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Elusive Exclusive Book Society. Elusive because you never know where we're going to pop up next. Exclusive because, I mean, look at us. Like, you think just, clearly we're experts. You think anybody can just talk about books and read books and talk about them? No, this is a job for professionals. And today we are joined by an expert in this particular field we're playing in. Brian from Bad Taste Books. A lot of applause break. Oh, thank you. Hello, everybody. <laughs> Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, thanks for being here. And sorry, this is what we're reading. Um... <laughs> no, I'm, I'm excited about it, you know. And uh, <laughs> like I said, you know, I, uh, I I feel like everyone at home should know that it's that it's noon on a Tuesday right now. <laughs> and I, I, when Nick told me that, I, I literally said, I don't know if you're joking or not. Like, what is it, <laughs> summer break? Do you do you people have jobs? And then it and then it clicked with me. Oh, like these are what the kids call content creators. Like I'm in the big leagues now. This is their job. And so I just want to say I'm honored to be among such celebrities. Thank you for having me. Clearly. If it makes you feel better, I should be doing work right now. <laughs> me too. There is a manuscript sitting on my computer that I've not touched in like a week. So <laughs> I'm just giving you guys and I don't do jack, video. so. <laughs> all right nick take it take it away all right so today we're going to be doing this hawk book by dan streeb it's the virgin stealers it is number 12 in the hawk series hawk is a men's adventure series starring a wealthy reporter action hero named michael hawk he has a ridiculous backstory uh i've tried to explain it many times i still don't understand it and in fact i was so worried about this part of the video that i was like i'm just going to read the first one right away because i didn't, i haven't read the first one so i don't <laughs> technically know what happens but i just couldn't read it after this one um so he in the first one, he tries to save some woman's life, and she was the daughter of, like, um, a dictator or something, and he had, like, this fortune. So he fails at saving this woman's life, so she curses him with the account number to all this money. So from then on in the series, he is, like, a bazillionaire. And he just kind of like travels around and avoids paying his taxes and fighting communists and bad guys, you know? What a curse. I know. Yeah. The cross <laughs> this man must bear. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I know. It's rough. <laughs> um, and in this one, he is in the, well, they go to the Virgin Islands. <laughs> There's a... <laughs> <laughs> do you even explain this there's an evil syndicate i guess but not the mob and who has this scheme of blackmailing people in positions of power this is hawk takes on <laughs> epstein island <laughs> yes <laughs> and some would say this piece of literature is prophetic <laughs> it might be and uh he <laughs> There's also, they have like a side project, like a, a white slavery ring, which is like at the forefront on the cover, but it's actually not the main purpose. And then uh, Hawk gets involved because he has like a weekend girlfriend and they try to capture her. And then he comes in and saves the day. And there's the basic plot. Throw in some snuff films. It's <laughs> creepy. <laughs> so would you say that that, that I, I, is that the plot is that how you saw it there yeah yeah i think so i think it's yeah, yeah. hawk is not a character hawk is a dan stribe's power fantasy i think <laughs> yeah he could do anything yes. yeah he also let us know that he has size 11 shoes <laughs> is that a uh I read I've read four other ones, and he will tell you that he is very much endowed. But it was left out of this one. I was so disappointed. Huh. It's usually mentioned. 
we were we were spared of the endowment describing scene. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, we do know that he is the world's greatest lover. Yes, yes. Uh-huh. Well, he, they also at one point say just kind of randomly something about like, oh, he has all this experience being a race car driver. He can do anything. He's the best at everything. I read one where he uh, joined this motorcycle, like uh, evil can evil type crew. And then he becomes the best. He becomes the best daredevil that's ever existed. <laughs> yeah. Nice. I, when I first read a hawk, I was like, like, I, I just died laughing. I was like, man, what is this? And I was living in Arizona at the time, and I was like, dude, this is lifted truck guy fantasy right here. Like, that's the <laughs> genre of fiction it is. This is what those guys in those lifted trucks, they dream about. Like, this is like, this is what I, this is how I see myself. I could, I could dive bomb a, a cruise ship with a, with a jet ski. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, am I getting any spoilers? I apologize. <laughs> I think no. that there's no way to talk about this without spoiling it. So Okay. Which there's 13 you... others. We can spoil this one. Okay. Which, uh, Nick, you told us that the cool thing about the Hawk books is everything on the cover happens. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that's 100% true, including the uh, the double the double karate chops. Yep. <laughs> I love yes. all, of the, all of the technical... Uh, Japanese a, sounding yeah, a, a technical oh. Japanese name for every single judo move and karate move, you know. But it, but it would be thrown in. It would be with with like a normal word afterwards. So it would be like the <laughs> Suhui Kai kick. It's a Urushio Kagi chop. And I'm like the way these are real, and the word at the end is just to tell us what we're reading. What actually happened? Yeah. <laughs> at one point, he at one point he just says. He threw a dragon fist blow. And I was like, what is a dragon fist blow? Is this, is this Dragon Ball? Is this like 1990s tsunami? What's going on here? Oh. <laughs> dragon fist blow. Oh. Yeah, so I'm, yeah, there's lots of detail. <laughs> lots of detail. <laughs> um, it's, uh, so the, it starts off with the, uh, the topless lady running across the beach there from the thugs. Can I read the opening line that this book starts with, oh, please? Something <laughs> yes. If the, the first sentence of this entire book is, if she could only work him into position for a hard kick to the nuts. That is the first <laughs> sentence in this book. I knew that right, right off the bat. For a wild ride. Right off the bat, just setting the tone. This is what kind of book this is. <laughs> awesome. Oh my gosh. <laughs> So what, I'm sorry, I, I cut you off. Go on, Nick. I was going to say, what? <laughs> so you get through the the first chapter where she's shirtless and those guys are chasing her. What was the, your first impression of what this book was going to be? My first impression was this is going to be the like the novel version of one of those old late 1970s and early 1980s like cheesy straight to video action movies. Essentially, like things are going to blow up. There's going to be tons of topless women running around for no reason. The main character is going to be sleeping with all of them. And uh, yeah, we're going to I'm going to have to take notes because. (laughs) Oh, my goodness. We might be the only four human beings who have ever read Hawk 12, the Virgin Steelers and taken notes. (laughs) Oh, I guarantee we were. (laughs) Yeah, I would bet on that for sure. <laughs> yeah, I, your... same. Same. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. just be. Movie. It's totally. Have you guys ever watched an Andy Sedaris movie? Yes. <laughs> That's what it's. What it is. I can't remember which one I saw. It. It was a long time ago. Probably me and my friends were just. Me and my friends were just like watching crappy movies and. My one friend was like, you guys know Andy Sedaris is one of his movies. And we watched it. I don't even remember what it was. It was like at yeah. 2 o'clock in the morning. I was super tired. I don't remember much of it. I just remember <laughs> laughing. <laughs> they're great. Yeah, they are. They're wonderful. Wonderful <laughs> films. Wonderful literature. Only the best. Yes. <laughs> 
So let's see the. <laughs> so okay, then we're introduced to Hawk. After that, what what was it? What were your perceptions of Michael Hawk there? Can I can I address the elephant in the room? I don't know if anyone's going to talk about it yet, but his hmm. name is Michael Hawk, right? Yeah. Uh, sometimes they call him Mike. Does anyone want to say that name? <laughs> Holy shit! Mike Hawk. Oh my god! Mike <laughs> Hawk. Like that's Mike on purpose, Hawk. right? Wow! <laughs> you just cracked the code. I'm, every yeah. every yeah. woman yeah. in this book like, wants Mike Hawk. Name? Every wow. woman wants Mike Hawk. Mike <laughs> Hawk. <laughs> that's amazing, first, ladies job, and gentlemen. Right? The well, I mean, Elusive Exclusive Book Society gets <laughs> the best guests possible. <laughs> Mike Hawk. Yeah, it's all the time. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. Sorry, you can continue. I just I was no, like, no, this out. that's amazing. That that is amazing. I can't <laughs> believe I never noticed that before. <laughs> oh. Well, okay, so like they do introduce us, they introduce us to him, and it's like, yeah, at, at that point, I'm like, what is the backstory behind this guy? Because they just, he's, what is he, pray, he's playing like, what, is, he's in the casino playing like craps or something, and he's just mm -hmm. like, he doesn't even care, he's just playing to play, and he's just like wasting money, essentially. It's like, okay, mm -hmm. where did this guy get all this money? And then he's like, I'm a reporter. I'm like, huh. <laughs> so yeah, I wasn't aware of the whole <laughs> cursed with a, with the, a, dictator's daughter's what did you say like a bank account number or something yeah yeah I think they made vague references to it here and there but but ultimately it doesn't it doesn't matter no no <laughs> you just know that he's loaded and that the women love him mm -hmm. that's that's all you need to know every woman every woman wants this man i know i love the initial when he sees the uh what's her name uh pam i think in the in the casino, and some guy hits on her, and she's like, get away from me, creep, and then he just walks right up and is like, hey, how's it going? She's like, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, which is funny, because he's cross-eyed in this picture. Is that just me? He's what? He looks cross-eyed, because he's scowling so hard. Oh, my God. <laughs> Doesn't he look a little cross-eyed? He's just yeah. so angry. So angry, but it's that feathery hair, man. I love that old-style jet ski, too. Like a, oh yeah, a little little tiny jet ski. It's awesome. Yeah, you can blow up a you can blow up a yacht with one of those. <laughs> and so I'll admit I had a hard time getting into this book at initially, until until the villains, the bad guys, were like, "Hey, we gotta sober up this one drunk chick." Oh no! <laughs> and boil her alive in molasses. In, in molasses. <laughs> <laughs> but here's my problem with that. What did they expect to happen? Because like they act all shocked when she dies, and it's like, what did you expect to happen? You dumped her in boiling molasses. <laughs> Were you gonna like? Because at one point, one of the guys is like, "Go in and grab her." He's like, "No, I'm not jumping into that." It's like, how are you gonna get her out in the first place? <laughs> Yeah, they're like, get her out before she dies. I'm like, no, she's she's gone. <laughs> oh my goodness, that was that was the that was when I started taking notes. I was like, okay, this is the kind of stuff we're dealing with. I gotta write, I gotta write that down. So that was my first note. Uh, where is it? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, Hooker boiled in molasses. <laughs> <laughs> this was uh, this was a dark hawk. I gotta say. Uh... It was kind of, it was a little, it was kind of a bummer at times. <laughs> it's, it's usually like towards, the, you know, when he storms the snuff film place and there's the shootout and the, the chainsaws, that's usually what Hawk is like the whole time. Oh. And it's, and it's just fun, you know? And this one was like kind of depressing and had like teenage hookers and, uh, oh my the gosh, snuff the, films and the, the intestines and stuff. Ugh. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that, it was... that is something I wanted to, you know, that I noticed is you you said what kind of, you know, book did we expect? And I expected, like you said, that just, you know, you were describing someone getting, he's he's stabbing sharks, he's throwing people into volcanoes. Um, this felt more, a little more grounded. I mean, there were some wild scenes, 
but uh mm. it was actually like a decently plotted little like thriller action thing um maybe a little less out there than i expected which is ridiculous because this book is ridiculous <laughs> but that's how high my expectations were for nonsense <laughs> yeah i did build it up huh yeah no it's great though <laughs> we can talk about plenty more crazy scenes but oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah the um you, yeah, usually it's um, just ridiculous fun. The uh, I was really surprised too because nothing worthwhile is ever said or happens in a hawk book. Like no real world. <laughs> like it's you know it's it's crap. And uh, they did have the whole you know the white slavery ring, um, but there was a part in it that like I was so surprised. And and hawk is like, oh, it's not just you know white slavery it's these women all over the world who are being captured like real human trafficking and i was like what the fuck am i reading like this isn't hawk yeah, like, too real, like, yeah it was like wow he actually said something here like that's kind of <laughs> i was really surprised the thing is yeah. though like by the end of the book did that has he broken up the i guess he's broken up that one like branch of the white slavery ring but I mean, he even says himself, like, he's not interested in, like, saving the world or saving people's lives. He just wants that story or whatever. So, like, by yeah. the end, he just, you know, he just, he forgets about everything that happened and he, he flies off to some other exotic location, hooks up with some more girls. <laughs> oh, yeah. He goes to Hawaii, the next one. I've read the next one. Oh, nice. <laughs> yeah. Hawaii is the one where he stabs the shark. So cool. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm on board i'm finding all of these and reading them like you a hawk fan oh, goodness yeah um so yeah i guess we'll just i mean you know i don't know we'll just do it loose here like you just want to what are some things that stood out like what was your like your favorite scenes i'll pose a question do you guys do you guys prefer the axe fighting scene or the chainsaw battle <laughs> Well, dude, here's battle. the thing: the chain. He gives us the chainsaw battle, the chainsaw <laughs> sword fight in the porn studio. <laughs> and there's like, like what the, the the doped up dominatrix lady with the whip that's trying to attack him at the same time, or whatever. <laughs> but they do that, and then they move on. A few chapters later, you have the axe fight on the ship, and I thought that was kind of a downgrade because, like, yeah. let's be honest: what is a chainsaw if not the evolved form of the axe <laughs> you can't give us a chainsaw fight and then be like oh here's an axe fight as well <laughs> it's like eh, it's kind of a let down i don't know <laughs> yeah the chainsaw <laughs> when the chainsaw happened i was like okay good like some <laughs> stuff is happening here <laughs> yeah yeah i had, I had some i had though. some questions about that uh the initial chainsaw sequence because the oh. initial chainsaw sequence, that's when I was like, what am I reading? <laughs> um, Is yeah, that when you texted was... us and were like, guys, when you get to this page, let me know? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's why I texted you that. Because I'm like, what is happening? Because it's like, I don't, I've never seen a snuff film. I'm not going to watch a snuff film, right? But right. like, he murdered a woman with a chainsaw by cutting her up into little little teeny pieces. Not him, like a a duplicate who looked yeah. little identical to the guy who whoever was the senator or something that they're framing. Except mm -hmm. uh, this one's uncircumcised. Like, hey, that's kind of a give that hey, that's kind of a giveaway, isn't it? Like, I don't like I said, I don't watch, I don't watch snuff films or but or pornography but those seem to be the type that's kind of what you'd be looking at right am i right about that <laughs> so maybe that's a giveaway <laughs> uh anyway and yeah i read i read, read that that she just got gorily like torn to pieces and her toes are flying and everything and i'm like you feel guilty <laughs> <laughs> yeah we're not are we we're not talking about the pendulum scene are we no that's well, that was no. what i was about to say you feel worse about the chainsaw or the the pendulum slicing up the two <laughs> underage uh, prostitutes oh, yeah, yeah, and like okay. filling yeah. their entrails all over the place. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Yeah, it was, yeah, that was a bummer. That was, <laughs> I, I will say that it was, it was comically done. Like their murder, the murders were so over the top. Oh yeah. 
Which definitely, I mean, if it was like, I feel like a real stuff film, you know, that maybe they'd put a bag over her head or something. I don't know. Ugh. But the, the decapitation with the chainsaw and just the fact that they have these killers on hand that look like these dudes, like, was so yeah. ridiculous. We're just gonna, I got a double. Like, you, it'd be so hard to find one killer, one guy to do this. Let alone, Let alone someone who looked exactly like the person who you just featured in the film earlier. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, they do it so multiple. It was... Apparently, they've done it enough to make a living off of this. <laughs> yeah, it was. Uh, yeah, it was. It was ridiculous. But yeah, <laughs> it was. That was definitely uh, the bummer of the snuff film stuff. I mean, it was like it's like the horror, it's like the horror episode of Hawk. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man. So yeah. Um the, any uh more of the fun scenes <laughs> than the stuff so, Why does uh this dude on a boat at the end have a nineteen twenty eight Tommy gun? <laughs> does it does anyone know the answer to that? Freaking just, cool. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like the writer was literally just like, you know what would be a cool gun? This. I want to shoot a Tommy no gun. Sense. He has it so if if millionaire uh, reporters with nothing else to do stumble onto his boat, he can shoot him with it. <laughs> Makes sense. Yeah. It's, I mean, the you know, break, it's the break glass in case of Michael Hawk, Tommy Gunn. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, when was this written? In 1980? Oh, it's only that. I don't know. So it was only, you know, oh, that wasn't that far away. 50 years. <laughs> With Tommy guns. Sure. Can you just put there? Yeah. In working order. Leftover. Leftover. <laughs> <Yeah>. Loaded. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. The guillotine was really, really good. Yeah. So good. Oh, the uh my favorite well, I have two favorite parts. I'll tell you one of them now. One of my favorite parts is when the Jeffrey Epstein character is well, I'm I'm gonna read it. He says, this is after they film, I think it's, oh, this is literally after the two girls getting uh, guillotined in half. They get Edgar Allan Poe to death. They get Edgar Allan Poe. He, he, he says, never before has anyone achieved what I have, Norbert self shouted in maniacal frenzy while he hovered around the chair. Glorious, the master of all snuff pictures, the C.B. DeMille of porn. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we just get so it. You're happy. the villain. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he was very cartoonish. I when they did the guillotine thing, I all I could think of was like who built that? Like who set that up in the ceiling in this room? The sh you know, like it just seemed like it would be a lot of work. Did they get a private contractor for that? And then said uh <laughs> what yeah, am I installing in this roof, sir? A a, a guillotine uh, pendulum. Okay. <laughs> but slowly, yeah, it slowly lowers. Yeah. Was it just me or the uh his buddy on the island, the uh the 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 boat guy, the 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 boat owner? My favorite George. character, Jory Jurgens. Jory, he, that's what it was. He literally was... describes him as he literally <laughs> describes him as Popeye's dad from the Popeye the Sailor cartoon. <laughs> Is it just me? Or did his accent continually shift from Jamaican to like pirate? Like R. Yes. To yes. straight up just normal. normal. Was that just me? <laughs> no. No, that yeah. There were there were several lines of dialogue where he forgot to give him an accent. And I was like, okay, he's just a normal guy now. <laughs> I never understood where he was from either. I thought at times I thought, oh, he's like an islander, you know? Mm -hmm. But then other times I was like, is he's a sailor from another place that's there? I, I didn't understand why does Hawk even know him? <laughs> did they did they talk about that? Is that in previous books? I don't. Yeah. Know. Uh, yeah, I think I don't know if it's in a previous book, but I know they did mention that he knew him from from being there before, mm -hmm. but I don't remember how or if it was like he just threw it in there because he needed a. <laughs> sure. I mean, it was totally like Doctor No, like James Bond. Mm -hmm. so I think he was just like, oh, I need something like that, so he yeah. made Jory. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know. There's a, there's a lot of moments in this where I was I uh, 
Like, I just recently did a whole marathon of all the James Bond movies, and I kept reading this. I was thinking, oh, that reminds me of Dr. No. Oh, that reminds me of Goldfinger. That reminds mm -hmm. me of, except, you know, accelerated to, you know, <laughs> the, the 11th degree in terms of, like, gore and over-the-top stuff. But uh, I liked I liked the, the Jory Jurgens character. I, I thought it was funny. To, I, it was just, I was imagining literally Popeye with, like, a grizzled beard following this guy all over the place. And I was like, oh, that's fun. <laughs> Yeah, he was good. I also yeah. liked uh, that it was set in the Virgin Islands and St. Thomas because growing up, my brothers both lived on St. Thomas. And one of my brothers actually ran the bar and grill at the pool at Bluebeard's Castle Hotel. Oh my gosh. So I was like, oh, they're naming all these places I look <laughs> kind of familiar with. That's cool. Yeah. That's yeah, the level of detail was like, you could tell that he'd been to the either live there or vacation there before because he's like talking about streets and this bar at, mm -hmm. at this hotel and this the level of detail all throughout was excuse me was pretty i don't know if it was impressive or what because like you could just say a small gun that he had a small gun but he was very specific like i had my cop four shot which i thought was hilarious because i'm like why do you keep bragging about this teeny little gun that's constantly i've never seen get yeah. Until I looked up a COP and I was like, oh, those are actually super cool. I get it now. He's just, he's <laughs> playing. Well, that is the, that's a staple of this genre, whether you like it or not, the whole gun porn. Mm. Yeah. Just like, yeah. Yeah. People freak out when they get it wrong, too. Like, you'll, really? you'll always see it mentioned. Yeah. And in every book, uh, Hawk will give a line where he is like, you know, these ridiculous anti-gun people like he always says that every book oh that's adorable <laughs> i you know when he goes to australia he's like i can't believe this country you guys aren't even allowed to have guns <laughs> i have a feeling that he and uh harry harrison would not get along <laughs> <laughs> no, they would not. <laughs> sorry i know I, I keep bringing up death world in these episodes i apologize I guarantee that him and C.L. Moore would definitely not get along either. <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I imagine Dan Street went to went on like a, a weekend vacation with the family to the Virgin Islands. And the whole time they're like, oh, let's go to the beach, Dan. And he's like, I, I need to walk the streets and learn about you know, for my future hawk book. Or, or maybe he was even writing it right there. Yeah. He, he, like, he the weekend. Been. He was a he was a journalist in real life. Mm. Was he really? And yeah, and he was in the uh, Korean War, I believe. Okay, let's see here. Yeah, so he actually was kind of like Hawk, but yeah, it's like you said, Jake. It's his imagined version of it. Yeah, wonder what size shoe he has. <laughs> Five. Okay. <laughs> it, not to derail too much but i i noted that he also wrote young adult fiction and romance fiction under under a pseudonym which was uh his pseudonym for romance was lee davis willoughby willoughby being the same last name as that one like british banker or whatever that yeah was involved yes, in one of the, yeah one of the snuff movies uh -huh. like, did find <laughs> like same spelling and everything yeah and he was also a he taught um creative writing in a high school oh oh he was oh, a cool gosh. teacher for sure i hope Hawk <laughs> was used in the lesson plan <laughs> <laughs> yeah i feel like like whatever high school would have looked into it and been like oh it's oh you're a writer it's <laughs> Virgin Island book. No, not that one. Not that one. Yeah, all these underage kids. Like, mm. well, let's use this uh, pendulum scene, kids, to demonstrate exposition. And <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, Mr. Streeb, what's a what, what's a uh, what, what's a what's a boiling pot of molasses doing in this story? Uh, well, <laughs> I'll let you see. We need we need to set a precedent with these villains. <laughs> I actually um, put it down, but I loved uh, the dumb joke that they make about the the jet ski 
I don't have it in front of me, but it's like, uh, oh, what's a jet ski? A Polish aircraft? And I was like, oh my god, it just oh, uh, I forgot about that one too. It spoke to me it's so bad. <laughs> the jet ski. I love the initial dialogue between Hawk and the Pam character when they first meet. Gosh. It's just like, dude, I don't think that Dan Stream has ever talked to a woman before. <laughs> it was, yeah. It's it's so condescending, yes. and she's just eating it up for whatever reason. <laughs> yeah, this yeah, is it very, was real corny. Yeah, this, <laughs> this book is very insulting to women. The, uh, like, the Pam character, his weekend girlfriend, oh my gosh. she goes to, like, Princeton. <laughs> she's, like, going to become a lawyer. And then but around she's him, she's like this stupid bimbo. Like, yeah, oh my gosh! <laughs> yeah, it's it's terrible. Yeah. And then, oh, and then the other, the um, uh, the madam, the madam character. Oh, who was uh, uh, she had like a history with, with him? Yeah, yeah, she was a student of his when he taught journalism at some college, oh, of course. And then, so she's like at her college doing her thing, and then. Years jump by, and all of a sudden, she's working at a brothel. Like, how does that even happen? How does she get to the? She's doing so good. I also love that it's revealed to him that that's Charlotte Corday like five times, and he keeps going. That name sounds so familiar. <laughs> well, women mean nothing to him. That's the thing. No. He's he's got to look through his his big folder of women that I've slept with in alphabetical order. Let's see, Corday, Corday, Corday. <laughs> oh, not ringing a bell. Yeah. <laughs> oh wait. <laughs> oh man. Yeah. So <laughs> my apologies once again. No, I mean, Hawk is fine, never like, <laughs> Hawk is never female positive, but this one was especially <laughs> like oh, not cool. Goodness. I'm just glad that you know we did Jarell Joy. We did a positive email book <laughs> and then i brought this thing in i'm like man, i'm like embarrassed well, oh, it's like matter and antimatter i'm sorry world i'm, sorry. I'm glad i'm glad we don't have a female guest this on this week this that would be <laughs> awkward <laughs> oh no it's all right i'll just have my face be the face of you know the problematic yes. content <laughs> <laughs> You named your channel Bad Taste Books. Come on. I asked for it, yeah. <laughs> my favorite part. I'm going to tell you guys my favorite part. And it has to do with okay. this. Because uh, it's not just Hawk that doesn't care for women. I don't think Dan does either. Because our <laughs> our Pamela Lynch, our main character, who I'm, I think the word character very loosely, <laughs> when she dies, you guys know what I'm talking about? Mm-hmm. Yes. How it says that Pamela's face contorted in agony, and an unheard scream tore from her throat. The captain's knife drove deeply into her soft stomach and sliced upward, disemboweling her. Before the pitiless, lifeless sack of flesh hit the metal walkway between two hatches, and that's the last we hear of her. Fuck does it? Fuck does it? He doesn't mention her again. He isn't like, oh, I like that chick. Yeah. lifeless sack of flesh the pitiful lifeless sack of flesh <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't stop laughing <laughs> oh. I, yeah. see, I'm going to be honest I glazed over that entirely because I was just surprised that like the character Hawk didn't get like a reaction out of that. Like it says, like he the captain disembowels her and then he just keeps like going on his business, keeps like, you know, hunting down yeah. these these human traffickers or whatever. And I was like, wait a second. Your girlfriend just got disemboweled. <laughs> but then he goes off to And then it has a throwaway line. Was that? At the end, she goes off with that other girl that was kind of along for the ride, but I don't think she actually spoke a line the whole time. And he's like, ah, yeah, I guess you're my girl now. Let's go. Uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> irreplaceable they mean nothing oh. yeah, I didn't catch the lifeless sack of flesh part but I do remember thinking like oh I guess she's dead like if I blinked I would have not talked about that again why is she but... pitiful 
I mean, how hard would it have been to be like, and Hawk said, no, I no. like her. <laughs> I think he just moves on and has an axe fight. <laughs> Why did she die anyway? It was so pointless. Just let her live. There was no reason to kill her. And then he kills the other woman too with the coral snake in the prison. In the jail oh, cell. I wanted, I, I forgot about that. I wanted so much more with that. Oh, I know. That could have been a whole scene. And then you just learned, like, in, in passing, like, oh, yeah. And then she died by a snake. And I was like, last oh. Last <laughs> chapter, like, a paragraph is devoted to the fact, oh, yeah, Charlotte died in prison. Snake killed her. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh, oh, well. Who, who again? What was her name? Charlotte, not ringing any bells. <laughs> I just banged her, but not ringing any bells. <laughs> oh, my goodness fantastic yeah yeah i mean it's <laughs> you have to have like a sick sense of humor i think to to appreciate it and you know i like that he dan three probably meant this like he he wasn't like he was serious when he wrote this is like this is awesome <laughs> and that's what makes it even funnier yeah. you know funnier. Yep. as we were laughing at him <laughs> It's not no, it's yeah. really like, wrong. It is awesome. It is, but it, it's just like when a when a uh, like some amateur filmmaker makes like some cheesy action movie, and they're like, "Oh, this is going to be fantastic," and then it ends up being ridiculous, and everybody laughs at it. It's like, nope, you made a comedy. <laughs> yeah, you made a dark comedy. <laughs> yeah, it was so ridiculous. They give uh, when the the CIA guy is captured. Oh my gosh. Um, and they're like, oh, yeah. we put we put PCP cubes in his coffee. He drinks it. And then he nods off. That's not even what PCP does. The no. dude is like all smacked out. Like if he did PCP, he'd be like crashing through the walls. He'd be like, great. Right. <laughs> oh. they, they glaze over that pretty quick. He's the one that uh, they, they, he, they drug him up and then they forced him to sleep with the, the, the two the two the girls Marvish, that get yeah. chopped up with the, with the yeah. pendulum so they got to just glaze over that like he he just wants to get out and what you know destroy their their base or whatever but he never they never come back to that and i was like we're not going to talk about the fact that you just went through all of this no yeah <laughs> i kept waiting for them to like bring it up like and then hawk finds the catch and made sure that he burned the what's his name the cia guy Pollock, right? Pollock. Pollock. Yeah. yeah, they made sure to get his film and they burnt it to make sure. Nope. They were just like, I mean, was that stuff on the boat? Did it go down? Is that where, what happened to it? No one seemed really worried about it. They weren't concerned, yeah. Doesn't matter. Dan Street didn't care. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so why should you? <laughs> At that point, he's just thinking what, what the next novel's going to be. Uh -huh. <laughs> well, I mean, didn't... Uh... I think Nick, you mentioned to me that he wrote, and every single one of these was published in eighty and eighty one. Uh, you mentioned that in your, I think you mentioned that in your Hawk review from ages yeah. ago, which means he wrote, yeah, all fourteen of these in in a two year period. Yeah, oh yeah, fourteen, yeah, fourteen books, eighty to eighty one. Yep, that's insane. That's exhausting. <laughs> no. I can't yeah. even. I can't even imagine writing like. Oh my gosh, I can't even imagine writing like three or four books in a year. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Oh, now, so, now mm. are you impressed? Get back to work. <laughs> I need to get back to work, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I can't be outdistanced by Michael Hawk. <laughs> Mike Hawk. Mike, Mike Hawk. I can't believe you've noticed that. that's good. Well, it's like, you know, I've been 12 before. I remember <laughs> names like Ben Dover and Seymour Butts and Mike Hawk. Mike Hawk. So as soon as I read it, I was like, there's no way that he actually did that. I wonder. <laughs> oh, my gosh. This was a lot of fun. It was. was I it? would say like, I would say like, I don't know what your guys' analytics are like, but mine are range from two to five percent female audience. And so when I was reading this, I was going to be like, uh, for my female readers, or viewers out there, I would say, don't, don't, don't mess around with Hawk. You won't like it. But I think you will because 
<laughs> it's so <laughs> over the top fun. And it's so gross. It's so stupid. It's so <laughs> stupid. Yeah, like I say, you you laugh at it. You know, it's I don't know. I know that there are people who probably read it and they're like, "Yes, finally, the lifted truck guys." They're like, "Yes." Mm. I feel like it's that. Um, kind of tongue in cheek, you know. Um, like I'm actually reading a men's adventure book now, and it's it's got very Meh. uncool writing towards women but in a more serious tone and that feels mm. a little ickier mm. this is very like you know i don't know it feels over the top and silly yeah yeah that's true because it's so ridiculous that oh. it doesn't count right do you think it's intentional or not like do you think he's being over the top or do you think damn this is one thing i've read by him do you think he's actually like yeah this is badass or do you think it's... i think that he... yeah i think he thinks this is badass uh for sure <laughs> and you know like you pointed out there was 14, 14 books in a year two years i mean he, you know he probably didn't think much about it mm-hmm. he was like i gotta get this done <laughs> let's see what else did we miss uh anything uh is there anything that you I said, I have a note that says, is there anything you didn't see coming? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, okay, no, so something that actually did make me laugh out loud was, um, oh gosh. Okay, so right after he goes to the, uh, right after he goes to like the, the film studio, quote unquote, and uh, he, he fights the I wrote down, he fights the, the drug-crazed berserker dominatrix. Uh, after that, he knocks a guy into what he assumes is a prop guillotine, but then the blade comes down and accidentally chops the guy's head off. <laughs> <laughs> that, uh, that was... Yeah, no, that I, I I laughed. I had to put the I had to put the, the e-reader down and laugh for a minute or two with that. That was pretty good. The same island engineer who was co- contracted to build the the pendulum also must have built that. A fully functional guillotine, yeah. <laughs> oh, it was set for some reason. Just set. You just leave them set. Yeah. That's how I leave mine. <laughs> I definitely think that the chainsaw, the chainsaw duel was Agreed. like my favorite. Because I was yeah, like, oh, my, this is so dumb. This is so awesomely dumb. Yeah. What? The There's only... a movie where that happens. Like two guys getting a, a, a chainsaw fight. I can't remember what it is. It's, I feel uh, like I should know this. I want to say it's like an old, like goofy early '80s, like low budget action movie, but I can't think of what it is. But that, that's what I was fi- fi- like picturing in my head the whole time while we're reading this book. Like I, I could, I could see like the film grain in my mind <laughs> while I'm reading this book. Oh, so good. I think the only note I have written down that I haven't covered is jungle walk technique. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> the jungle They're walk. describing someone walking sneakily, and they say she walked with a jungle walk technique, which I had to Google, and I, I don't yeah. think it's a real thing. No, no. What's it's, about that? Real, thought... it's about as real as a dragon punch blow. <laughs> <laughs> I thought Hawk walked with the jungle walk technique. Oh, maybe it was Hawk. My my bad. <laughs> what was it again? Is it just I don't even remember that part. I don't think I think it's when it. he and he and Jory are like they're trying to make their way towards the, the 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 film studio, but they have to get through the jungle first. And it goes into super detail about how they're like stepping around the twigs and stuff, but yeah, they keep referring to it as the jungle walk technique. It's like the dune sand walk. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> I do remember that part when they were taking out the sniper because they didn't want the sniper to to uh give away the fact that they were coming that they were sneaking in, so they shot him <laughs> with a silencer. Don't want the snipe. <laughs> Did they have a silencer? Yeah, yeah, that was when he made the, the like the PVC silencer or whatever. Oh, I, should, I must have missed that part. Pollock or somebody. No, it's Jory is like, is that thing even legal? He's like, not here, it's not. 
That was one of the times where that was one of the times where Jory lost his accent, by the way. (laughs) (laughs) I think that's the only scene where Hawk has a moment of weakness because he gets his leg caught in a a tree limb or something. Yeah, that was kind of weird. Like that was it came out of nowhere though. Like but they never like it because then he makes it just fine for the rest of the jungle. So what was the point? I thought it was strange he initially like his initial investigative techniques were I'm gonna walk down this street and get beat up on purpose. <laughs> Draw out the bad guys. Like what? <laughs> it, it, that would did not make sense to me. Yeah, and I think it happened like twice, didn't it? Where he's like, I'm just gonna go get myself beat up. He was like, I'm gonna I'm gonna walk around and be be visible, be bait. Yeah. <laughs> didn't he put Pam as bait also? Oh yeah. Yeah. There's like yeah, people did. trying to like capture her like all the time, constantly in all different ways. And then at one point he just leaves her at the hotel room by herself. He's like, if anything happens, just I'll be back. And I'm going sunbathing. I'm not waiting. Come yeah, I, yeah. I'm gonna be honest, I hate that character so much. I thought she was so freaking annoying. Like just <laughs> so dumb. And they, they keep talking about how she like what she went to Princeton or whatever. She's like <laughs> Supposed to be super intelligent, but she keeps making these stupid decisions. Well, that's that's Dan Streep's view on women. I guess yeah. even the ones at Princeton, yeah. even the ones that are going to be lawyers. <laughs> he actually doesn't call them women; he calls them pitiful sacks of flesh. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> this, is this is going to be on the internet now. Thanks, guys. Yep, on the internet it is. I. I'm the one who I'm the one who picked it, so that's it's gonna be all on my head. I'm like, yeah, I'm like, man, yeah. When we were reading, it, I was like, damn it. Well, I kind of picked it. You said I wanted to do a hawk, and this was the only one at my bookstore. So I was like, how about this one? Like, okay. So it's I'll I'll share the blame. I'll share twenty five percent of the blame. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Twenty five percent. Just twenty five. That's all I'm willing to do. <laughs> Oh man! Oh. Well, you guys picked me for this one on purpose. I don't think would Ira have you been like, yeah, I'll read Hawk. Hawk twelve. Ira would not have done it. <laughs> like I, I don't know about this, guys. I kind of feel like maybe we should. Should we reconsider this? <laughs> Is that your Ira impersonation? That's my Ira impersonation. I don't know. I've kind of got to have a little grin. Like maybe we shouldn't do this one. I think. I maybe. hope he's not watching this. Ira, we love you. I love you, Ira. We love you, Ira. I make fun of everybody, myself most of all. Hey, while we're on the topic, though, I will say, you know, very seriously, Ira's channel is the one that, while I was watching it, I, I kind of went, I want to make a YouTube channel. So, mm-hmm. if you're watching this, Ira, thank you. There you go. Yeah. Yeah, Ira's the man. Oh, yeah. Although he did his final latest Hawk thumbnail. Thoughts? Oh, Final Hawk <laughs> Thoughts? I'm sorry, go ahead. No, nah, it's better. Let's go Final Hawk Thoughts. I don't want to keep talking about Ira. Ira was a guest last, <laughs> last time. Moving on. <laughs> okay. Final oh, Hawk the, Thoughts? <laughs> the, the, the big man, the Wilson Fields, the, the big guy that's behind the whole thing. Oh, he died yeah. getting pulped up by a giant dr- uh, drive shaft. <laughs> <laughs> I kept thinking of the the scene from oh uh, which uh, which double seven movie is it where the the one guy like goes down the conveyor belt and he gets like mulched up by like <laughs> like a, it's like some kind of like like steel mill something I can't remember what it is it, rem- it reminded me of a bunch of gory deaths that I've seen in James Bond movies getting mulched up by that drive shaft or whatever it was is that a view to kill it. Mm, it might have been. It's it's one of like the eighties ones. I can't remember. It, it might have been that one. Oh, with Timothy Dalton. No, yeah, That's it is. One it ones. is one of the Timothy Dalton ones. It's the. Uh, it did, might he, be. Uh, like, he license, license to kill. To kill. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think. It, I think it's license to kill where he's fighting a guy on a conveyor belt and the dude trips and falls in like a. Like some kind of grinder or something, and it like chops them all up. Yeah, like Hawk number twelve. Surprising, you thought you were getting to something fun and silly, and they were surprisingly brutal. 
with those mm-hmm. <laughs> Timothy Dalton ones. <laughs> oh my gosh. But that said, if you, uh, I don't know when was the last time one of you guys watched uh, On Her Majesty's Secret Service, which was the only one that had, uh, uh, what was George the Lazen, George Lazenby? George Lazenby, his only, his only James Bond movie. There is a scene where one of the ubiquitous skiing scenes in those Bond movies, where uh, one of the villains falls into a snowblower, <laughs> and it just shows like it's just red paint spewing all over the place, all over the snow. <laughs> And the rest of that movie is totally tame because it's like a it's like an early seventies Bond movie, but oh, it was ridiculous. Um, Michael Hawk. Final Hawk, Final Hawk thoughts. I think <laughs> Hawk is a, a blast. <laughs> I get the appeal because it is so over the top and so much fun. Um, yeah, it's definitely it's not. It, it is what it is. It's junk food. It is yeah. mm-hmm. it is a snack novel that is just you read this if you want to turn your brain off and just be entertained for a couple hours, and it is absolutely perfect for that. Um, it is funny that we're doing a like in depth review of this because this was never this was never designed for that. <laughs> this was never designed for people to taking this seriously. This was designed for you know you pass it to your buddies and be like, dude, you need to read this. It's hilarious. <laughs> I loved it. I'm reading more. <laughs> I, I want to read the next one. You, you said that's the one where he fights a shark and goes to the a volcano? Hawaiian, yeah. Hawaiian okay. takeover, yeah. Hawaiian take. I'm going to have to read that one at some point. <laughs> that was the first one I read. That was the one I was like, oh, I'm all in. <laughs> yeah, this nice. is uh, my final Hawk thought. Is this is definitely the least enjoyable of all the Hawks I've ever read. Really? Yeah. Huh. It's only up from here, huh? Yeah. Uh, well, I don't know. I've heard like the the first one is kind of a bummer because uh, it's not as ridiculous because it's setting up the yeah. him being rich or whatever. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> the I forgot about the ending and the main bad guy. We didn't talk about him at all. Um, I love at the end where <laughs> they figure out who it is, and he's like, "Wasn't he like a Democrat or something?" <laughs> like. <laughs> <laughs> subtle that was subtle dan streep he always subtle. throws that in there too yeah that it's always some liberal person that's the bad guy oh god <laughs> yeah dude it's awesome it's hilarious yeah oh, definitely it. the least least enjoyable of the hawks that i've read <laughs> only go up only go up So I guess uh, next book. Next book. All right. Next book. I It's my turn to pick, even though I was partially responsible for this one. Uh, oh, the next book, it's been teased many times on my channel. Uh, I can't make a video without somebody talking about this stupid book. <laughs> and we are finally, finally, finally doing Bum Cider by cc mccap <laughs> it is happening i'm not doing it by myself i'm not doing it alone because this one we're actually we have a very special guest which i'll we'll announce it in the future but we're actually doing this one live so oh, are we we're doing this one live yeah we talked about it oh man um so we're doing it live the date to be determined and uh so for the for the the audience out there you guys have to get a copy and read it along too because there'll be a live chat going along with it i'm not doing it by myself and it's it's too big for it's too big for the three of us too so we need uh we need all the help we can get to tackle bump cider <laughs> i guess i couldn't announce a guest it's bryce from shelf help uh no shelf centered and uh, he's really good, a really good booktuber, and I've done some some collaboration with him in the past. He's also like the nicest guy on the planet. Have you guys <laughs> watched anything by Bryce or by Shelf Centered? I watched mm-hmm. some of his stuff. He's like the sweetest guy possible. So I think it's gonna be funny if this book if we end up eviscerated. It would have been funny to get on this one too, because <laughs> <laughs> he's a he's a, an attorney, but I think he's he's got to be like a defense attorney for bunnies or something. He's literally just the. <laughs> 
<laughs> smiling happy so he's reading bum cider with us <laughs> i think That's for anyone but brian the hawk book would have been absolutely embarrassing to do but look at how yeah. proud he is he just sat there with a smile the whole time like <laughs> that's true <laughs> yeah this was, this was perfect <laughs> yeah, good choice guys <laughs> i will say you have the most eclectic uh in the best way possible uh, uh taste so it's not just bad taste because i'm watching i watch your hauls and your reviews and i was like oh that looks good that looks good interesting that looks good. a goosebumps an anamorphs a pamphlet <laughs> like you'll just read anything yeah man <laughs> whatever whatever sounds appealing I, I'm going to be honest. I can't wait till you finish the whole Goosebumps series. I want that massive Goosebumps review. <laughs> oh, you're going to get it someday. <laughs> How many in the original run? Like 50 or something? 62. Oh, my gosh. Yep. Ridiculous. That's awesome. I hadn't well, it's seen. It's what I grew up on, you know, so it's nice to like revisit for nostalgia value. Oh, yeah. I hadn't even thought of Animorphs. For like thirty-five years, yeah. <laughs> Until I saw, it, I was like, "Animorphs!" I remember that. It's a genuinely good series. I have heard movie. good things. <laughs> this, this I've seen hard... YouTube videos where guys go like in depth and they do like in depth reviews on Animorphs. So, yeah, it's got it's got something. Yeah, check it out. <laughs> I need to, and and they're like what? They're like eighty pages long, so. Uh, yeah, like 120. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I love that the hawk review ends with us talking about kids' books. <laughs> this is a review for the whole family. <laughs> uh, I'm filming this on my four-year-old nephew's birthday. <laughs> I'm I'm in my two-year-old kid's room right now, so it's great. <laughs> nice. <laughs> oh all right what's everybody have let me let's go around the horn say what everybody has going on you can talk a little about your channel if you need to or what some upcoming videos who wants to go first why don't tim why don't you go first oh my gosh i'm tim from secret fire books i uh review indie books self-pub books as well as classic fantasy and science fiction uh a little bit of comic book stuff in fact the next video i'll be uploading is a part of a comic book haul that i started this week and uh there is something that happened in this video that it, i thought it was incredibly funny but i'm gonna bet that no one else will think it's funny at all but we'll see but that should be going up tomorrow morning well tomorrow whenever this drops right <laughs> we film this we film this ahead of time you dingus sorry <laughs> yes uh yeah. <laughs> By the time he watches, this will have dropped already. I'd, I'd like to point out I'm also not the smartest person on this call, probably. He's no Mike Hawk. <laughs> <laughs> Ryan? Yeah, man. Um, you know, if you don't know my channel, my name's Bad Taste. That's not my name. I'm Brian. My name my channel's name is Bad Taste Books. I, uh, you know, just talk about books and stuff. I read whatever I want. A lot of science fiction, fantasy, horror, that crime, trash like this, you know, reviews, book hauls. Nothing too crazy. I don't do a lot of editing. It's just me chatting. So, yeah. Good. It's great. And I love it. No, I love no research too. like uh, No research like these guys. <clears throat> yeah. Lucky you. <laughs> Uh, so I'm Nick at the book graveyard. <clears throat> I cover books like my cock, uh, horror books, genre fiction. Um, uh, I have the conclusion to the 10 worst oh. 80s horror novels. Uh, it's recorded. I yell a lot at the camera. Awesome. And uh, yeah, some more reviews. I have this awesome Donald Goins review uh, where I did a lot of uh, research and a uh, very interesting fellow. And and I don't know, stuff. There's going to be stuff there and check it out. Like, subscribe. I'm excited for your bookstore interview too. 
Oh uh, yes, yes. I have to. I <clears throat> screwed that up because I had the uh, the setting on my phone that was like the anti stabilization was turned off. So anything that was moving around in the store that I filmed is like, <clears throat> oh gosh. Oh. So I have to go back and re-record all of the like the B footage of the tour. But the interview was is good. I don't have to redo that. Thank God, I don't know if he would do it again, but <laughs> Jake. My name is my name is Jake over at Pulp Mortem. I go through and review old science fiction books looking for a hidden classic. I also like say my, like hey, maybe Bum Siders, maybe this is the one. <laughs> It's probably going to be the most mediocre book in history, but don't I'm say that too. <laughs> well, who knows? We'll make it fun if it is. But uh, yeah, I also do book hauls. I also do the occasional reviews or, or not reviews, occasional lists or rants whenever I feel like I need to do something clickbaity to kind of catch the algorithm trail, but I never do. So although by the time this comes out, I kind of am picking on Ollie from Tim and Ollie, not in a bad way, because oh, I kind of no. did with that one video. And I do it again in this video, which which is going to come out. It'll, it'll be out by the time this is out. And <laughs> I might be starting to trying to start a fight, but I love Ollie, but I might be trying to start a pick a YouTube battle. And so if that's what ends up happening, uh, be sure to choose your sides, everybody. And uh, the line has been drawn. I'm coming. I'm coming for Ollie. <laughs> His army might be a little bigger than yours. It's just a little bit, but I'm bigger than him. So <laughs> I am physically bigger than him. I am physically the biggest booktuber on YouTube. So <laughs> you keep saying that. How big are you? I'm 300 pounds and I am just shy of 6'5. So, and oh, okay. if you buy a hat at the store, it won't fit on my head. <laughs> I have the largest head I've ever seen. Like, that's why I look like a normal guy right now. Because my 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 head is so huge. Like if you listen carefully, you can hear my headphones screaming in pain. <laughs> and I wear size 13 double wide. My cock. 13 double wide. No size eleven's here. No size eleven, I'm gonna shoot off my foot like Cinderella's steps is <laughs> Well, Ollie's scared now. <laughs> he better be scared. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, Ollie's like the sweetest guy. Oh, well. That's it. I think that's, that's a rock review. Thanks, everybody. That is. Sweet. Thanks for having me, guys. This was a blast. Oh, absolutely, yeah, dude. Here, we'll do one more, one more pause break for our special guest. Because that's all he's going to do. He's not getting paid. And even if we were getting paid, we could well, this video would have been demonetized a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Bye, everybody. Bye. Uh, see you guys. Have a good one.